Hands On Gaming Podcast, episode eight, and I'm one of your hosts, Daz, and with me as always, my good friend, Brendan. How are you, mate? Pretty good, and you? Good, good, man. Good, man. I'm up you awake this time? Oh, nah, nah. As we're <laughs> nah, in, I'm, already, nah. I'm still sleeping <laughs> with my uh, ra- raspy, sexy voice in the morning. <laughs> so how you been, man? Good? Yeah, I've been pretty good. Snow's started here, yeah, so it's getting cold. Winter's coming. Yeah, Christmas is early Cut. already, hey? Yeah, cr- yeah, it's already started. Yeah. Yeah. Play lots of games, though. Oh, nice. Oh, I wish, I wish. Yeah. I've, been, I've been a busy boy. It's, it's, been, it's been a while since our last one. Just, I think we've just been, uh, I think life takes over sometimes. Yeah, so. it's been about a month, though. Yeah, yeah, it has, it has. So because we took so long, we don't have have one guest. We've got two. How cool is that? Very cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah, our guests for today are Adrian and Graham from Zapped to the Past podcast. How are you guys? Welcome. Hello. Yeah, we're good. Good. All good. Yeah, here yeah, in uh, Thank you. bland, right. dull England. I'm so glad that you guys um finally joined us. So, yeah, thank you. Glad, glad to be asked. Really, uh, really Absolutely. pleased to be on. It's uh, should be a good laugh. You got to play Bruce Lee a lot. That's exactly. I don't know I've given the game away, yeah. I don't know. Oh, no. <laughs> People know. They've downloaded, oh, no. they've downloaded it, haven't they? They know. They, they know. Like, yeah. oh, uh, I gave it a you. That's it. You wrecked it. Nah, nah. It's late. <laughs> <laughs> it's late here. Um, no, yeah, it's, it's good. Um, uh, you know, listening to your reviews and stuff. It's interesting hearing all your various versions that you have to play through. Because, um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I was always a Commodore 64 kid. Same, same. Yeah. Uh, then. So <laughs> anything else is, uh, you know, it's like foreign to me. It's all weird. I don't understand it. I don't like it. It's all strange. <laughs> <laughs> so it's weird. Yeah, you, we have we have some of the same experiences. <laughs> it's a scary place. Oh, it can be. <laughs> those different versions. I've <laughs> never seen so many varying, varying versions of 8-bit Bruce Lee in my life. It's it's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> that image, be. that loading image, is going to haunt me for my in my dreams. I think. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. And that uh, uh, Bruce Lee's digitized face. Uh, <laughs> in our, I wouldn't even call it digitized in some versions. No, <laughs> no. I, I, I was being kind. I was being uh, <laughs> I was I was erring on the side of kindness for once. <laughs> nah, it was like kindness. Yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, so, all right cool all gloves are off cool well, you have that to. picture you have to. well we're, we're all c64 guys so who cares <laughs> that is true yeah. yeah that is true yeah, yeah. <laughs> watch our, our listener base just drop after this episode <laughs> yeah we, we thought you guys were like totally non-platform biased but now we know we yeah. know the truth <laughs> yeah. oh jeez. Yeah, well. all right let's let's get on to this um guys you just want to talk about your show um quickly or what, what's it about what you what you guys do for the people that haven't tuned in yet um yeah so uh we host every week zap to the past so we release an episode every week it comes out on monday and zapped to the past is basically me and graham playing and going through and talking about every single game um that's not the strategy or event sections that was reviewed in the magazine zap 64 um and when i when i say every game I mean, every game we play them all, whether whether they get three percent or ninety eight percent, and so that's what we do. So we play a load of games, um, and we sort of take about a couple of weeks to cover each each issue's worth of games. Although that may change coming up with the avalanche of software we have looking at uh, coming coming mm-hmm. our way. Um, and in amongst that, we also look at what was going on that month in music and films and TV, and it's mostly UK based. Um, but if something comes up which is international, we discuss that as well, especially films, um, and that's what we do. Um, we don't, you know, say we don't pull our punches. Um, if the game's <laughs> rubbish, we say it's rubbish. We say sure. um, more often than more often than that, it is. But there you go. So yeah, 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 yeah. Agree more. yeah. It was funny because I, I was listening to the the start of your show when, when i found you guys i discovered you, you like, oh this is cool and it's funny most of them were bad <laughs> in the early issues yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah we, we we i think we set a, a benchmark with the elite review as our very first thing um we just came on and said if we don't like it i agreed with you 100 <laughs> percent. i have no idea what to do no idea i reckon it's boring no, it is, boring it's correct cool. 
yeah. <laughs> from Dizzo to yeah. Lave and back again. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, so we were a bit like a bit weirded out. So I thought, oh, oh, this is because it's going to go well. But, you know, we've done loads now. How many episodes have we got out now? Is it 40? 40 will be coming out. Sure, well, 39 soon. 40 is the last one yeah. prior to the, the, um, the episode yeah. that's the awards, the recent awards. But we've played, in, even in the last year, it was 215 Commodore 64 games played that's that were insane. reviewed. And I can tell you, some of those games, there's, you go from the heady highs to the, the real painful lows. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> some games are so, oh, yeah. so crap. I'm just like, wh- why? How did this even find a way to... <laughs> my eyes it's just and then and the <laughs> yeah. thing is you, because part of the, uh, the part of the rationale for us doing zap to the past was to sort of think oh because there is a bit of rose tinted spectacle sometimes about mm-hmm. some of the games because you, you remember, remember them differently to how they play so we've gone back and some of those games have, have been thankfully as good as i remembered them the ones that you know where i think some of the ones that everyone kind of remembers are really cool still are in mm-hmm. some ways but there's other ones in there that either i didn't know existed or had very peculiar memories of how they, how my mind constructed them to make sense and to make them better than my mind than they actually were. I'm just thinking it was an ex- experience where I'm, my brain just tried to rationalise it over a period of 30 years to, to help me make sense of what I actually saw and experienced. Because some of them are awful, absolutely horrible. And I just, you know, we're, we're quite unforgiving in that podcast. Now, I think we have to be because at the end of the day, these things are put out there for the rest of time for us to, right. be able to pick apart in yeah. 30 years. So... What are you doing? Why did you do that? <laughs> yeah, and they're asking money for them. That's our <laughs> yeah. that's our big thing. You know, if you ask for if you ask yeah. for money for something, then you know it has to it has to meet a certain level of qu- quality some mm-hmm. point along the line. And um, a lot of these games don't get anywhere near a, any level of quality. No, I agree. But, no. I agree. Like, uh, for, for example, the yeah. first C sixty four game I ever played was Back to Reality, a Mastertronic game, at, at a friend's house. And back then, I was just Atari 2600. So when I saw this, I'm like, wow, this is mind-blowing. This is like, for example, <laughs> a kid playing a Master System game and then playing a PS4 game and thinking, whoa, what the hell's going on here? I don't know if you guys have played that. Have you guys played Back to the Reality before? Didn't ring a bell. No, no. I don't remember it. Oh, well, don't play it. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah well, if, it comes it. Up, if it comes up, we will. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, yeah, yeah. I guess he will. And uh, you know, it's it's always had a soft spot. Now, whenever uh, like when I was older, I I saw pictures. I'm like, oh, that's the game. So I, I downloaded it uh, a few years ago. I'm like, oh, not download. I had it on my hard drive anyway, <laughs> all the ROMs. But I try to okay, <laughs> what the hell is going on? I go, this is <laughs> this is absolute garbage. How did I like this? It's like it's like you said, Graham. It's like your brain tries to, I don't yeah. know. It just it just thinks, okay, this is awesome, but it's not. It's no, mm-hmm. yeah. I've I've been, a, been through a, the same pain by wizardry. Yeah, I remember yeah. wizardry being so cool and the music being great, and then when I loaded it, I was like, oh no, yeah. <laughs> it's, got, yeah. it's all gone horribly wrong. <laughs> there was there was a moment in an early one where uh, I'd, I'd, I I have very fond memories of Richard Pettis Talladega. Um, and and then, uh, and then we played it, is. and it was like, oh, oh my uh, god, ter- <laughs> so, terrible game. But, yeah, all, awful. So but bad. somewhere in my mind, I I, I know I like I played, uh, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you, you feared for my sanity, didn't you? So, yeah. And I told you that I liked yes. that. Yeah, because <laughs> I played I played yeah. it because we'd replayed it by then, and it's like, oh, it was such a great game. Like, are you feeling okay? <laughs> <Are> you sure? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not. Have I got the right game? <laughs> yeah, but we had, but it wasn't ugh, bloody awful. awful. Wait, you, Brendan, do you have anything yeah. like that that you went back to and thought, oh shit? Uh, yeah, there were so many. Like when I've been playing, like over the last few years, I can't think of any like any particular one. Yeah. But there's definitely like you just load it up, and you're, it's it's more so you load it up and you start playing, and you like, what the hell is going on in this game? What was what was what was I even supposed to do? Like, it was more like trying to figure out how to actually play it then. Like, it, you know, whether it was good or not. And, you know, and it, yeah. does, it doesn't help that most of your games get from Dodgy Day from down the street. And, uh, yeah, and without the instructions, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> good old yeah. Dodgy Day. <laughs> dodgy Day. <laughs> well, crazily enough, when, uh, when we uh, was, well, when AD and I had way, way back when we was at school, um, we had a video game rental store in Grimsby where we lived. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's totally unique at the time. I mean, there was nothing else like it, but you could go there and get 
all the latest tape. Oh, Commodore wow. 64 and Spectrum oh. games, and you could rent rent them out for a night. I think it was about a pound or Pirate something for a Central. night. Central, yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then then they started yeah. selling pirated games, and then eventually, oh. unsurprisingly, the shop closed down for reasons of not <laughs> yeah. making any money. And it's yeah. like, well, you're not you're not renting any games; you're selling dodgy copies of them all. Yeah, um, but uh, they they kind of shot themselves in the foot in that. But uh, that was a, for a time; it was the place to go and get all of the latest games because you could rent them. And then you know. As soon as, it, as soon as you found someone who either had one of those weird backup systems where you could plug two data sets into the same thing and record on one and play on the other, or someone who had a tape-to-tape sort of mm-hmm. stereo where you could just mm-hmm. put two tapes in and yeah. I don't know, anything yeah, like that. The amount of varying try, attempts I'd tried to get to record from one <laughs> tape to another, balancing speakers on top of re- tape recorders. And oh, then wow. Finally <laughs> just got a, an, ex, an expert cartridge and doink. Yeah. Rules changed from that moment, of course. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I, bought a backup, I bought a backup board out the back of a magazine. Um, I saved up two weeks worth of pocket money, uh, paper round money at the time, <laughs> and sent off for it, and it was uh, it, it paid for itself, shall we say? So, uh, <laughs> it's a revelation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, you're yeah. dodgy, Dave. Yes, absolutely. I'm well yes. dodgy, me. Yeah, that's uh, yes. the, yeah. It was written. It was written about me in the toilet walls at school. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, the day I got my expert cartridge, I've never been so popular. Is All it? of a sudden, it was, "Can you copy this? Can you copy this? Can you copy this? Can you copy this?" I was like, "Just give me, the, give me the tape here." Yeah, yeah. I, mean, no, but I just press one button, and it's, and it's saving the whole memory out. Here we go, yeah. boom! There we go, done. It was a game, and then there were games that were protected. I'm like, "Damn you! <laughs> Damn you, apocalypse! I'll mega apocalypse! You, you I'll... will get broken." <laughs> <laughs> Oh jeez, this is good. this is a good chat. Uh, I don't even know I want to talk about the game anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh jeez. All right, all right. Let, let's get into this. Hey. So uh, the next game now. So we'll, we'll move on. Um, we'll be, we are doing Bruce Lee, chosen by the Twitter community. It's just just a quick overview. I'm not going to go into too much detail. It's, it's not there's not much to this game anyway. Um, this game uh, Bruce Lee was actually um is a platform game written by Ron J Fortier. I think that's how you pronounce it for the Atari 8-bit family, and it was published in 1984 by DataSoft. DataSoft is a US company, as f- as far as I know, and it yeah. was yeah, yep, mm-hmm. and it was published also by US Gold in PAL territories, so even yeah. here in Australia, so. Did but just a quick question, um, Brendan. It was yeah. was um, US gold in uh, South Africa, or was that was like, or would you get like the US? Well, we would just get the UK uh, I guess copies were pal, of the games. That's right. were pal, yeah, 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 pal. Okay. So we got all the US gold versions. Okay. So yeah, okay, good. So that means we all played games at the proper speed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the pal. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. All right, cool. cool. And the music sounded proper. Yeah, <laughs> Not exactly. The double speeded ones. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. Anyway, the graphics were uh, by Kelly Day, and the music was by John A. Fitzpatrick. Music. I wouldn't even call it music. Uh, <laughs> that's a bit nasty, isn't it? Um, so yeah, the player takes the role of Bruce Lee, and you have to click like lanterns uh, to progress through the game, and it opens up little, you know, secret passageways and that so on. Um, you could also have a two-player mode where someone, there's, you've got two enemies, by the way, chasing you at the same time. Uh, you have a ninja and a sumo in in the game. And uh, a second player can join in as a sumo to try to stop you from uh, progressing through the game, which is a really cool little... Uh, Very little cool. Add, uh, add, you know, it's 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 really really cool system in the game. It's I don't think there's anything like that. Okay, so later on, the, the game came out on the, the Commodore 64, the Apple II, uh, also the ZX Spectrum, Amstrad, and MSX, and also DOS and BBC. There was a lot we had to go through here, and uh, I'm pretty sure that all versions are covered now. So we're gonna it's gonna be pretty in depth. Well, as in depth as this game can get. So. Let's start with the original version. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go for it, guys. Um, yeah. It's it, just to just to put in here sort of thing. What, this is weird, fortuitous that we're talking about Bruce Lee because we I was forgot to put this in our episode zero where we looked at games ah. pre-zap, and I completely forgot about Bruce Lee. And then when I came back to do it, I was thinking, should we do Bruce Lee? And then I thought I can't be bothered. Mm-hmm. And then weirdly, you popped up popped up here, and so now we're playing all the Bruce Lee. So well, there you okay. go. <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's pe- penance, I think, for not putting it in. I think. What, uh, um, there you go. So, so the Atari hunt. What the Atari version we're talking about? Correct. Um, yeah. 
it's okay. It looks like I'm going to say it looks like the C64 version. It's the visuals are grey. There's lots of grey, and um, it is what it is. It, I thought um, the sound in this version was particularly annoying. Um, of all the versions I played, I think this one annoyed me the most for the sound, apart from the DOS version. But we'll talk about that. Um, but there was it, it, it. I don't know whether it was my system or the emulator or whatever it was, but it was really, really loud and off-putting and clunky and clicky and horrible. Um, it's you know it's okay if this is the original version. Um, I don't know how much detail do you want us to go into. Do you want to sort of talk about it? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, just go into detail on on the actual version itself, like graphics. Yeah, I mean, it, it, pl- it plays okay. Um, weirdly, and, and I found this in a couple of the versions, I don't know if this is a bug in the emulation or, or whatever, but in some of the versions, the enemies don't follow you properly. They don't climb the ladders. And yeah, if you, did you find that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, but, yeah, in, yeah but, yeah. but in other versions, they do. Mm-hmm. And lazy so it's, ninjas. It's weird, but... Yeah, so mm. it, yeah, lazy ninjas. Yeah, um, so this version, um, you know, the, the the sprites are okay. There's obviously there's only three sprites, isn't there, running around, um, and so that they're all right. And the the version feels okay. You just it, it's just I thought it's a bit a little bit slow, maybe a bit pacey in the CC one. We'll come to that, um, but it's just you know it's, it's okay. I thought it was it's, it's not my favorite version, that's for sure. Even though it was the first one, um, and, and if it's you know it sets out its task, but it's it's okay. I didn't. I didn't hate it. I didn't mind it. So okay, it's all right. It's Bruce Lee. It looked very similar to the sixty four one. I'm going to say, but there you go. Mm-hmm. That was my mm-hmm. take on it. Okay, I'll go, I'll go quickly. I'm, I'm on screen. I thought. I thought the controls were smooth. I thought they were fine. Um, sound effects are boring, but I think. I think sound is irrelevant in this game. I don't know. Uh, I thought it played very smoothly. Um, the colors were a bit dull, which I thought was strange because mm. the Atari's got more colors. Yeah. yeah. It's it's I get a bit, maybe a bit lazy there. Um, like, I think it played fine. I actually liked. I really liked the way it moved. I don't know. I just thought it was smooth. I thought, yeah, that's it's pretty much me. I, 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 it's hard to tell with that version to the CC4 one. I don't know. I, I liked it. I mean, there's not much else I can really say. I did. I did play all these versions thoroughly. So it's funny because I just just know the game so well. So, um, yeah. Yeah, no, I thought the Atari 8-bit one's fine. It's not, it's not the best one, funny enough. I agree, it's not the best one, but I think, mm. I think, I think it was a great uh, foundation for the other versions to to improve on. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mm. Okay, Graham. Yeah, um, the loading screen first off, blue. <laughs> it's so blue. It's like the bluest <laughs> blue, Bruce Lee, blue, blue Lee. It was. Um, <laughs> and uh, I thought the sprites were quite nice in this version. They played it played pretty fast because some of the versions suffer from weird ladder based slowdown. I'm pretty sure Bruce Lee was like a nimble martial art acrobat. So the fact that he has trouble climbing ladders and escaping off ladders in some of these versions made me laugh a lot. Um, but he's the sprites were quite good in this version. It actually had a nice contrast, albeit that the backgrounds kind of were a bit bland and a bit bit odd. Um, sounds were quite basic, which is odd for an Atari because the, it's a the pokey chip in an Atari, isn't it? And they're normally pretty good. Yeah. Um, so they were a bit sort of, but they weren't as they weren't. The, it's, this isn't the worst. This isn't the best version, but it's certainly not the worst. And I actually quite quite liked the fact that it played well. I just had a lot of lot of trouble trying to get an emulator on the Mac to really make it work for long because it just kept freaking out. I'm not sure what it is, but um, my time, that, albeit that it was sort of in short control bursts. I thought it was pretty good. It's actually this kind of the top three versions, isn't there really? And this was one of those sort of three that was in one of the better versions because it is on the sliding scale. It's kind of a nice scale of sort of the, they're they're okay, they're okay, they're okay, and then all of a sudden there's a, <laughs> sort of a parachute drop yeah. where suddenly something happened. <laughs> but yeah. that, I thought it was okay. So far, so good, um, and they're a good playable version of the game, albeit that it was a bit colourless in places. Nice one. I think that's a fair assessment, Brendan. Yeah, I had a pretty much the same uh, same view on this one. Uh, I thought the graphics, like the sprites and everything, really good. It's almost exactly like the Commodore sixty four version. Um, and the reason I say that that because that's the original version that I played, so I'm just I have to base everything off that. Uh, the colors, yeah, they're a little bit muted. Um, 
It played a little bit slower than the C64 version. Not much, but uh, it's it still it still plays you know good fast pace. So it didn't like hamper the gameplay that I felt. Sound the sounds okay. It's definitely not anywhere near the worst version uh, as far as sound goes. But uh, it's uh, I I do like the fact that it has all the sound cues in it, uh, like like the C64 version. You know when like. Any little thing happens, there's a cue, so you know you've done something. A lot of the other versions, um, those are missing, and you're not really sure whether you've done something correctly, you know, like open a passageway or something. This one has all those little sound cues, which I really liked. And, uh, yeah, so overall, overall, I think this is a pretty good version. Um, I think if you had this originally on your 8-bit Atari, you'd be pretty happy. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Mm. Cool. Well, there you go. Like I said, that, that's 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 a foundation. So uh, let's um, yeah, let's move on. Okay, I'll I'll start the next one. I'm gonna go ZX Spectrum, right? Because <laughs> I was like, I I never played this version until now. Because I said, look at it, I think this just looks terrible. But I think it actually plays okay. I'll give it that. Um, the, the sound isn't great, but that's a 48k game. But I don't even think. I don't know. I don't think even the sound really matters with this game. I don't know. I'm not that fast with it. I think the stages look fine, but the characters look weird. That looks just strange. <laughs> the way they yeah, move. So true. Now, it's weird. Um, I I laughed. I le- I legitimately laughed a lot when I saw the sumo. Uh, what's his name? Hammy? <laughs> Is it Hammy? Yamo. 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 <laughs> it's George Costanza. Uh, so yeah, um, it totally is. I'll just think of Serenity now, like when he's coming to get me. In. <laughs> it looks ridiculous, and and uh, uh, Bruce, Bruce Lee looks looks terrible when he's running. Even if he's, if, I don't even if you call that running. Um, yeah, look, stage layout. Two frames fine. of animation. Yeah, it's just. It's just <laughs> It's like, come on. I mean, look, the stages look fine, but the, the characters look, look terrible. Absolutely terrible. Um, the the Spicky can do better than this. But most importantly, though, um, it plays well. So I'll give it that. The, the hit detection was hit and miss. Um, no pun intended. So um, <clears throat> besides that, I th- look, it was good. It was, it was a, it was a good, good port. Um, but yeah, it's, it's hard to, to uh, detract from how ridiculous the actual characters look, especially uh, George. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's that, that's my uh, that's my assessment. George Yamo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was. I've like the only version I ever played was the C sixty four version because you know that's what I had back in the day, and I didn't really. I've never had any reason to play any other version, but that was it, right? So uh, this was also first time for the spectrum and uh wow it's horrible as far as it's just horrible it looks terrible um graphics are horrendous and uh yeah the characters look weird um i thought the ninja looked equally as bizarre he's like running around he looks like he's about to participate in like javelin and summer games (laughs) too you know he's running with that with that (laughs) spear thing and it's like what is he doing it's just like so bizarre i also thought the uh uh, this is the version that i noticed particularly the ar was really stupid like like as dumb as you could possibly think like they were just doing stupid things like if you got a little bit further you know when as soon as you go underground and um there's lots of little traps set up in that these guys are just like murdering them themselves constantly like doing just <laughs> the stupidest things uh the one the uh the yamo i saw him jump onto like that kind of elevator thing where like, you climb it up and it pulls you up and he just let himself go straight up into the sparks and <laughs> he just mur- he just murdered himself he didn't even try to get off <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, what is going on with the AR? It was just crazy. Uh, yeah, um, sound is awful as usual, but that's just the specy. You know, not much going on there. And yeah, this is this is an awful version as far as I'm concerned. Wow, scathing, <laughs> <Yeah>. scathing. <laughs> uh, 
I think someone doesn't like it's- the ZX Spectrum. I've noticed that. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how you really feel, Brendan. Yeah, don't Terrible. Hold back. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> uh, Adrian? Um, okay, I'm going to go right at the other end of the uh, <laughs> the spectrum um, <laughs> because let's just co- let's just comment first of all. Uh, that's some I've finished right here. That's some spectrum ass music to start with. I was like, that took, because I've not played on a Spectrum or even looked at a Spectrum in many, many years. As soon as I heard that beep, 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 whatever it was, um, I was like, oh, that's, yeah, oh, put, give me back my SID chip. Yeah. Um, <laughs> however, when I started playing this, once I got past those, uh, you know, the visuals are the visuals, they're, they're Spectrum mass visuals as well, aren't they? They, they? they look what they are, but... I actually found this was okay. I thought I quite enjoyed playing it. I thought it was quite fast. It was responsive. Um, and it moved at a decent pace. Mm-hmm. My big bugbear with uh, the Atari version that we're talking about, and some others as well, is that it takes you ages to fall. The falling, when you drop off a platform, mm-hmm. just seems to go so mm-hmm. slow, and it kills any pace in the game, and a lot of them do that. This one's fast, so when you fall, you, you, you fall, and you, it moves quickly. So there's a snappiness to this game, which I actually, this version, which I quite enjoyed, and, and you know... I, Playing it with a joystick, turned the Kempston interface on. I was, I thought it was all right. The AI, I, I know what you're saying there, Brendan, about them being stupid sort of thing. I, I found that, that they're mostly once you get into the caves, they're stupid on every version. They're always <laughs> killing themselves. They're running into yeah. fire. They're jumping <laughs> into spikes. Yep. They're just doing whatever. That you know, this. They're just uh, what. But in the top half of the section where they, you know, I think this was the third one I played. So um, having them actually climb up and chase you around the level was, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, well, that's better you know because i've not seen that so far so i thought that was all right and so because this felt snappy once you do you know it's not going to win best graphics award and it's certainly not going to win best sound award but but the speed at which it played and the responsiveness i thought this was probably one of my favorite versions of it so that's where i landed on this this one Fair. You treacherous scum! <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll hand in my C64 badge on the way out. I'm very, Later. very sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, he's no Jedi. I'll have, I'll, have the, I'll, have the, I'll have the tattoo laser removed tomorrow, and, and what have you. <laughs> God, the only thing I could say about the Sinclair Spectrum version was that it was fastish. That was it. I hated the graphics. I thought they were horrible. The sprite design was an affront. And I just found it, like you say, it just it just horrible. And as soon as the enemies appeared, I was too, too busy laughing at the enormous <laughs> head of the sumo guy. I was like, "What? What? Why would you draw it like that? Have you not seen all the other versions to know that you don't need to yeah. draw it that way?" It's, it's, and then it's, it's, it's on top like of he's that, got the hair on the side. It's like he's got hair on the side of his head. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the, the way that Bruce Lee jumped was slightly different to the other versions because his, his his flying kick was less floaty and more kind of up and down and so the jumps the jumping on it was a little bit different and i think that is perhaps like you said ad whether the gravity in this is a little bit nippy a bit quicker so maybe that's how it helped it helped it but i couldn't get past i mean there was that weird i, I don't think you can call that music it started with an, a sound of some description it's kind of <laughs> blur, blurted yeah. out i'm thinking I don't, I don't know what that is um but i'm, I'm not yeah. going to sort of debate it the sounds like that spectrum plicky plucky kind of crackly out of a two inch, you know, a two a two inch speaker buried in a computer somewhere sound. So they're kind of neither here nor there. And it didn't really have any colour to speak of, did it? What surprised me was that the sprites weren't better defined and drawn. It's a spectrum and they tend to tend to have a high resolution for things like that. Um so and so I think they've gone for speed more than accuracy of version. Mm-hmm. And thought, you know what, if you can play with this fast, you might not notice that the graphics are going to actually damage your eyes after a while because it's so bad <laughs> and that looks nothing like a ninja. So yeah, it's I didn't rate it. I don't like Spectrum games generally anyway, with the exception of maybe two or three. But this isn't a great Spectrum game and it's just a bit faster than some of the other versions. It's still, believe it or not, better than some of the other ones, but I'm sure we'll come to those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fair. It's funny how we're all got this different opinions, hey? Uh, yeah. That's <laughs> cool. All right, cool. All right, well, that's the specy out of the way. Um, I'll go to the MSX because I was quite surprised with this one. Uh, okay, Um, he wants to start with that one. Anyone? What do you want me to do? I'll look at the MSX one if you like. Okay, go for it. You go first. Sure. Um, it, this surprised me, um, and I'm not a huge 
I don't have a lot of knowledge about the MSX, I have to say. So it took me a long time to get an emulator to, to actually run this, but when yeah. I did, um, I found it was the sprites are all starting to feel a bit similar now, outside of the mm-hmm. Spectrum and some of the really bizarre versions that we've come to. But the sort of a main, the main chunk of the versions, the MSX, the the Amstrad C sixty four, and the Atari, are starting to have a look and feel. What this lacked in its kind of color scheme, it zoomed in a bit, so its play uh-huh. play screen was seemed, on my version was closer in. And I think that helped. The backgrounds were simpler. It was fast. Um, they were a bit horrible, the backgrounds, in terms of the way they looked because of the colour limitation I'm getting of the platform. I don't know much about the MSX. And the sound was, again, in that kind of blippy, bleepy, te- you know, clicky, bleepy territory. Um, it just felt sometimes that... I've, I don't know if it was the emulator I had. Sometimes the, the, the controls didn't respond as quickly as they had in other versions. It seemed yeah. to slow and speed up and slow down this version. I don't know if that was just me. But... Um, it was quite a playable version. I quite liked the fact that it was zoomed in a little bit. I don't know why. I, th- I thought that it kind of helped it a little bit for me. Maybe it's just because I'm older. <laughs> I need to see it yeah. bigger. But uh, I thought it was. I thought it was quite an interesting version. But um, without a lot more knowledge about the MSX, I'm not sure where it would fit in the sort of comparative specifications of the machine. But I quite liked it. It was. It was, certainly wasn't terrible in any stretch of the imagination. It was quite a nice playable. It was fast. I'll give it that. It was quite a fast version of this game. So I thought it was all right. Well, the, the MSX One um, hardware is is uh, pretty much the ColecoVision. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, the Sega SG One Thousand. That's that's the MSX family there. Okay. Um, yeah, the resolution was a lot lower for that for that system. So I'll, I'll go next then. Um, yeah, I was expecting a, a specy port. That's what normally happens with the MSX. They normally. Um, yeah, because they run the same processor. Funny, it's 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 the, the the MSX is a Frankenstein of I think of, of different parts and so on. But um, yeah, it normally gets uh, specy ports. So I was like, I was quite surprised when I loaded this up. Um, look, yeah, I didn't mind the the real estate how it was a bit smaller. It was okay. It gave it a bit of a different spin. Um, I did notice that the game did run slow in places when things got a bit stupid. Yeah. Um, look, it was it was good. I think I think if you had this and you had never played any other versions back in the day, you'd be happy. Um, but yeah, I liked it. It was okay. It wasn't it wasn't the worst. wasn't the worst port. the The colors the colors were a bit off putting. I thought the wrong colors. Um, but the the sprites did look correct. So I think I think that's what um kind of saves it. Yeah, you because know, the gameplay was okay. But yeah, I think I think aesthetically, it's yeah, it's, it's a mixed bag for me. It's like when I like when I first played, I was like, oh, I don't know. The more I played it, I thought oh, this is okay. It's it's a, it's an okay port. It's 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 not one that you should go out and go out of your way and play. Um, if if you're not familiar with MSX emulation, I wouldn't even bother. But um, it, it's okay. It's okay. It's nothing special. So yeah, yeah, I um I thought this was awful. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. This one, <laughs> um, uh, this was one of the worst. Not the worst one. One of the worst. But because um, it seems okay at first, the colours I thought were a gaudy nightmare, um, and they, they just you know that. Just to remind myself, I just brought some images up, and it's like those green mountains. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. good lord! Um, and so, but this seems okay until you get uh, the sprites get anywhere near each other, and then it just becomes a flickery mess. Um, yeah, I don't know if you yeah. had. I don't know if you experienced that, and that was like. You know, it re- almost renders it unplayable because there's just things start flickering. It only happens when three sprites are on the same line. So I don't know if that's a problem with the hardware. I, I, like Graham, I'm not a mass. I don't know much about the MSX. So whether it's something about drawing multiple sprites on the same, you know, across the same line or something, I don't. I don't know when they're all, when they're not in the same line. It seems to move okay. As soon as they get you know level with each other, it's just, you know not even close sometimes. So. It just slowed down and started, became almost unplayable at points. And I did wonder if it was the emulator, if it was mine. But so I, d- I did a quick check on YouTube, and it seems there's a video there showing the same thing. So I thought, no, that's just this version. Um, and again, on top of that, you had that slowness of, of gravity um, whenever you dropped off anything. So this, for me, was um, you know not not nowhere near the top. This is near the bottom for me um, because it's unplayable at times, and I don't like the colours, and it's slow. So there you go. No, no, <laughs> nothing good to write home about with this one. 
<laughs> not yeah. an MSX fan. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. I don't uh, know. I had this. I had the same experience with this one. I think this one's right at the bottom of the pile. Like it's top three of the worst <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Uh, <laughs> I I thought I thought the color scheme was just weird. You know. Um, I don't know whether that's like like you guys said. I don't know whether that's the limitation of MSX. I have limited experience with it, but it just the colors are just weird. Uh, the animation was really choppy, and there's tons and tons of slowdown whenever whenever any sort of action is happening in this one. It just it just freaks out, and uh, and mm. it it makes it kind of like the playability just drops. Like you can't even get like a good kick in because it's like you're running past the guy and then it's flickering and it's constantly flickering. It reminds me of like a, an NES game, you know, <laughs> a, a, NES shoot up, shoot him up, you know, like anything yeah. comes on screen and starts, starts flickering and you can't see the bullets anymore. It's like that kind of thing. Um, I didn't notice, uh, I don't think this one had, um, intro music, at least, uh, the copy that I had, uh, I tried. So they just skipped that, which is probably um, a good thing <laughs> with the sound effects in this yeah. one also, like <laughs> mediocrity at best. Uh, it did have the two-player option, which is cool. Um, some of the, like quite a few of the versions don't even have that. So, I mean, there's that, I guess. <laughs> but, I mean, why would you want to load this up in two-play if you have, like, you know, the C64 Atari version? So, but, uh, you yeah. Have, you might have a friend you really don't like and just want them to leave yeah you want to torture them yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you've yeah, 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 the yeah, just, just, just show them the msx they'll be like well, do you know what is that the time just, yeah <laughs> the time? they'll be gone i'm getting home <laughs> <laughs> yeah no this one's bottom of the barrel for me no oh, fine wow <clears throat> all right let's let's go amstrad for the next one, the CPC. I'll start with this one. Um, I thought the colors were nice. I thought I thought this looked the best out mm. of all the versions. Um, <clears throat> I thought it plays fine, but I did notice a little slowdown. Um, I did play this on real hardware. Um, now, I don't know what was going on. I felt like there was a bit of input lag, and I'm playing it on real hardware, so oh, maybe it was the ROM. I don't, did you guys have any input lag at all? Not that I know. Uh, no. This one, no, no. no. Oh, I wonder what was going on no. then. I don't know. Maybe something's up with because I've got an adapter. Maybe because I can use a, a mass system pad on my my CPC. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe it had something to do with that. I don't know. Okay. Well, look, I had a bit of input input lag. So obviously that's my end. That was a problem on my end. Um, <clears throat> I, look, I thought I thought it looked gorgeous. Best best looking one for sure. But my biggest gripe, what I found, and I didn't get that far with this because it was just very frustrating, was that I I didn't go down to the the dungeon levels at all. I stayed on top because it, it was frustrating me that much. But uh, I found the enemies to be a bit more aggressive, right? But not just that. When I died, I didn't respawn on the same screen. I went all the way back to start. It happened twice. Mm. And I thought, nah, that just, that really lost it for me. I thought, you know what? That's a shame because this version could have been, I reckon, the, the best one. Because the, I thought I loved the graphics. The graphics looked looked amazing on this one, but um, that just put me off completely. It's like a, it was like it, it was like it was like it was like a girlfriend that you have an argument with and she just pisses you off and it's like get out of my face. <laughs> it was like that. It was like that with me. It just it, it offended me. It's like why would they change that? I don't know. It's just. I don't know, maybe it was the ROM, but I don't know if you guys experienced the same thing, but that really, really annoyed me. And it happened twice, and so I, I, I turned it off. I was like, you know what? Look, maybe maybe I should have been a bit more generous and gave it a bit more time, but it was like mate, playing all these Bruce Lees. I was like, by this time, I'm like, all right, I'm getting over this. I mean, if this is what it's going to throw at me, I have no time for it. So it's like I got really upset. <laughs> so uh, that's... That, that's Look, I, look, I, I think it'll be play. It'll play okay overall, but yeah, I don't know. I think I think that's that's a really, really um bad choice in the game that they did on that version was not respawn on the same screen. Yeah, 
Yeah. I, I never. I, I don't think I noticed that. I don't. Oh. Whether, I'm not sure. I, 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 I don't know whether at this point I played a lot of Bruce Lee, so I knew how to run around the screens and I didn't die. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, so it may have been that. What I did notice, too, I, I'll agree with you that this is the best looking one. Mm-hmm. The visuals, and I've noticed it, it's, it's the it's a, it looks really nice. The colors are really nice and bright, solid and vibrant. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, strangely, um, the title screen music is the best version. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's, good. It's, better than the, it's better than the C64 one. It's better than the Atari one. This is the best version of it. The, or should we say it's the least least horrible? I don't know which way you want to call it. But it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. I, know, I, quite, I quite enjoyed the, the music on this. It's all right. The weird thing that I've noticed, if, the, if you're going to look at sort of odd things to sort of pick up on, um, because, I, uh, again, it had that snappiness. You fell quicker. So that was good. The enemies followed you around the screen. So that was good. So like you said, they were more aggressive, which I, I, it lends itself. It, it's better for, for you because if they just stay at the bottom, like they do on some of it, it's, there's no challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, so I quite quite like that about this. Um, there's a li- little weird little omissions. Like when you get all the uh, lanterns in the top three screens and you go to that middle screen, like on the C64 and the uh, Atari one, the, you'll get the little animation of the portal opening, the little trap door opening. Mm-hmm. You don't get yeah. it. So it's just... It's just open on this. It's just done. There's no none, none of that little sort of interstitial stuff is there, um, and the flame effect when you get down into the well as well would just well I don't know what they were. It looked like some like little. It looked like a skeleton hand just creeping up from the floor rather than a flame. It was all you know. <laughs> yeah. just, that was really bad. But then that's just the really only sort of you know graphical thing that was a bit lacking. But for me, this this was you know up there with the Spectrum was probably one of the the best versions for me. Um, I, I enjoyed my time with this. I don't know if I died, so I don't know if I did. I don't remember, recall, if anyone else may have done that, but I don't recall getting sent back to the beginning. I can imagine that would annoy you, especially if you're further down in these levels. That would really be annoying. But um, mm-hmm. as it stands, yeah, I enjoyed this one. This was good and better, better than I was expecting it to be, I have to say. Cool. Brendan? Yeah. Yeah, um, I also enjoyed this one. I thought it was... Uh, it's. I think it's one of the, one of the best versions. It's... Uh, the beginning music is actually pretty cool. I actually liked it. Um, it sounded like it sounded good. It it wasn't like whiny or pitchy like like mm-hmm. some of the other ones. Uh, the colors, like all you guys said, the colors are really nice and vibrant. Um, I just I just love the look of it. It's much more brighter than like the other versions of the game. Um, it plays well. I thought it played well. Um, I don't remember. Um, I don't think I died up top. I just, it's like, like Adrian said, I played so many different versions at this point that I just like was just running through it, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> running through clicking those lanterns, basically just avoiding, uh, the, the Yamo and the Ninja and got down to the bottom level like pretty quickly. And, you know, I'd seen enough at that point, but, um, so I don't even think I even died. So I'm not sure, you know, whether you respawn, like, like how it works. And, um, yeah, I was, this version is surprisingly good. I don't know why I say surprisingly. It is good. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's, um, I'm, I'm being biased towards C64, of course, but, uh, yeah, so I liked it. It's good. Uh, if you had this back in the day, you'd be pretty happy, I think. Mm-hmm. Cool. Graham. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with everything. I mean, nothing really to add on what, to what everyone else has said. Mm-hmm. Graphics are superior in this one. The audio is superior. It ran a little faster. Um, so uh, the set, the actual spot effects are a little bit weaker on this version than they are on the C64 because the C64 has more of them. So when you collect lanterns and when you do this, there is little interstitial sounds and animations like like Eddie said that you get. I did notice, and I don't know if you guys noticed this, it was this version and another one. Where if you if an enemy was running towards you and you went off the screen and you came back, the enemy wasn't still running towards you. They kind of just respawned, which was a way of getting out of um, mm-hmm. difficult situations. If you were mm-hmm. able to get off the screen, you could just sort of force the enemies to respawn away from you, which actually was um, it became more noticeable um, on the on some of the levels on some of the versions. Sorry, um, where like you said, where you did respawn right at the beginning again. Um, because I think unless you were unless you'd run out of hits, I think you get three hits, don't you, from the ninja? Or I think so many hits and then you die. Um, unless you'd done that and or you, you did get an abstract one, it did send you right back to the beginning again. At least that, that it did for me. 
Um, but um, you were unlikely to run into an enemy multiple times if you kept, if you were going in between levels because it kept respawning them away from you again. Mm-hmm. So it felt like they had a sort of a, a job. The ninjas kept sort of frustratingly for them, I imagine, in their ninja training that they had <laughs> every time you ran out, ran out of the room and came back in, they had to sort of restart <laughs> from the back of the room again. Like, oh, this, is, this wasn't part of the training, right? Um, so, you know, and the fact that he's attacking you with his, his bo- boken or whatever it is, his staff... Um, I just think that, that that seemed to be an anomaly in this version. And I think it also happened in, um, it's not the C64 version, because that doesn't do it. I'm thinking it might have been later down the line with maybe the BBC or one of those other versions. But yeah, if you went off the screen and came on, it respawned them, which meant you might avoid death a lot inadvertently. And then when you did die, it respawned you right back at the beginning again, like it sort of respawned them. It was kind of a an anomaly in this version. And I think, like you say, I think that could get very annoying very quickly if that's because... No one wants to restart. You know, this is fist two territory talking about where you go right back to the beginning oh, of the game yeah. and you actually uh, you know, yeah. what, reaching for the Jeez. reaching for the, the cables at the back and uh. yanking the power cable out. That's <laughs> the end of that game forever. Like. <laughs> so uh, uh, <laughs> into the draw but, yeah. it goes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, I, I had a friend who used to get so frustrated playing th- these kind of games that he used to talk to his computer and. And he'd pull the power cable out the back and he'd like end up putting it going, I win because <laughs> whenever I pull out the power cable, I kill you all. You're all dead. You all die. You know? he, honestly, he took it. That was Rick for want of a name, Aid. Took it really seriously when he was playing these games. He, he, he always thought if he pulled the cable out, it meant he won. <laughs> it says a lot about a, his mental state at the time. I'm not sure why we spent so much time there, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was very, all oh, very evil professor at that moment. Very I scary. Beat you all. And then his mum comes in and is like, son, what, Rick, what, what's wrong? Get out! <laughs> yeah. Or I'll pull your power cable out! <laughs> yeah. yeah um, Colourful version of the old Amstrad. I yeah. didn't play a lot of Amstrad games, but it was always... It was the the colour angle was always the Amstrad owner's thing wasn't it oh look at the colors i'm yeah. like yeah yeah but you've look at all look at your browns horrible. look at all your browns yeah. we got color look at, look at all your browns yeah <laughs> <laughs> inside out is the game i always remember them going on and on and on about with the amstrad like, oh, yeah, okay one game is great but the rest of them yeah. are crap yeah yeah no, I'll, I'll give it i'll give him chase hq <laughs> and chase him, hq yeah. yeah amazing amazing port yeah and exelon no there's a few there there's a few there there's a few not many but there is in- day two was also good on the Amstrad. Which one? Match day two, oh, the okay. football game, the soccer game. Soccer I used game, to play yeah. a lot of oh, right. at my friend's house. C64 version's horrendous. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. <laughs> <laughs> I played the Amstrad one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool bananas. All right, let's 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 go to our our friend, the C64. Hey. I'll get I'll get I'll get um either Graham or Adrian to do that singing from the zapped podcast so he wants uh, he wants to start with that uh i'll, I'll go okay. um it, it looks like the amstrad uh, sorry it looks like the atari version mm-hmm. um it's you know it's very very similar so they've obviously based the c64 version really very heavily on the atari mm-hmm. version and not gone too far away i mean there's always those two machines always you know the atari usually looked a little color more colorful but here it's they didn't so it was kind of played into the c64's colors color palette quite mm-hmm. well this, you know, to it, my main bearing bugbear with this version um, was it was it just felt a bit sluggish. Um, it just felt a bit slow to play when playing after playing some of the others. Um, and like it took th- this one, I, I really noticed that it just takes ages to climb. Yeah. Um, yeah. It took. Yeah. A- I was like, I was like, oh god, it's it's like. Um, uh, I know we don't really talk about modern games, but you know, Demon Souls to Bloodborne or something. I mean, Demon Souls, it takes ages to go up ladders. And Bloodborne, you're nice and quick. So this felt the same. It was like just just climbing anything was like, oh, right. You got you had to mentally prepare. You had to sit down and go, right, I'm going to climb that now. Sort of psych yourself up and then start climbing. It was just it just took forever. Um, and I don't remember it being like that because I, you know, I, I played this quite a lot. It's one of those games I think everybody played. It was always it was buried away. I think somewhere on a C60, you know, on a C90 tape that a friend mm-hmm. had given me. Um, it was one of those you played and went, oh, this is good, but I don't remember. It was bits problems with it um again the two enemies don't follow you off the ground floor so if you lower them down to the bottom you can just run around up top and clear up um which is a bit of a shame they just stand there as well they don't even bother running they just stand there and watch which is weird 
It's like uh, they're just sort of, oh, what do we do? We'll just stand here. Uh, oh, okay. I imagine they're having a conversation um, or something. Just start, start chatting to each other. I don't know what they were doing. Um, but, you know, the music was okay on the title screen, but it wasn't as good as the Amstrad version, strangely enough. Um, and, you know, it's an okay version. We all played this back then, but there are better versions, I have to say. Oh. Oh, mm, I know, I know, I know. Wow, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. Wow. I'm sorry. Honestly, the, the, I said, what? I told you, I'm handing in the badge. It's okay. Wash, <laughs> wash your mouth out. Yeah. So... <laughs> you disgust um, me. <laughs> this was the only version I'd played really that I'd given any time to, to you no, know, back in the day, and then so revisit. Really, I played all the other ones for the, obviously for what we're doing, but. Uh, C64 was always my go-to version of this, and that's where my memories are of it. I have a lot of fun memories of the two-player variant of this, um, just because it's such it plays so well. It is really weirdly ploddy paced the game, um, and it co- sort of works for this game a little bit, I think. So it doesn't feel like um, it doesn't have that kind of weird arcade platform super speed that you get. So it doesn't feel like you're sort of plowing through the levels like a you know a Bruce Lee who's just necked a load of amphetamine and decided to go on a you know a hundred meter sprint down the road <laughs> it just feel a little bit more like a, a, a but a bit of a better pace for the game however when you get to ladders and things you have to climb it's like his training has all gone to part it's like you know it, running and jumping and doing flying kicks and super punches all good climbing things now nah, it's just and, and yeah you're watching the, the dragon he literally climbs down a rope pretty much but you know, just single-handedly hand over fist down a rope and just suspends himself in midair on that rope for about 10 minutes while he's waiting for the guards, which I think a lot of this game, by the way, is kind of based around that, that sequence in Enter the Dragon film where Bruce Lee goes under the ground in Han's yeah. base and then he sort of yeah. tries to find his way you know, into the various things. So I think there's a lot of that in there. He doesn't necessarily meet a ninja or a sumo at any point in that film just for the record, but um, <laughs> like AD said, these are the laziest ninjas in sumo was out of all the versions, just kind of stand around, you know. What did you do last night, Dave? I don't know. Just, you know, just, do you see, what was that? Oh, I don't know. I want Bruce Lee though. Don't worry about that. It's nothing, nothing like that. <laughs> so they just kind of stand around and didn't really do a lot. And they were really rubbish at fighting as well. It's like the worst fighting ninja of all the versions. <laughs> he just kind of kept running, running backwards and forwards past me, enabling me to just punch him repeatedly in the face, which I seem to be able to do to both of them. Even when they were like on top of each other, right next to me, they either got a lucky strike in or it was all over for them in seconds. And then it was just, you know, Bruce Lee doing his thing. Um, and I could, you could just literally fly and kick your way across the bottom of the level and just keep kicking them in the face, even though when they were falling down yeah. off the platforms. It was just like, if you wanted to go on a, just a ninja sumo beat them up, you could just hop along the ground and keep kicking them in the face, which kept <laughs> me occupied for a while. And then, um, but this is the C64 version, so good little bits of music here and there, good sound effects, nice sprites, plays to the Commodore's strengths with the sprites and all of those things. So it surprises me about the pace, but it must be deliberate because they could have made this a lot faster and the sprites more multifunctional. There's only three of them. So it's not like there's a, a scan line, raster line issue here or a technical problem that's making that happen, unless they've coded it badly, which you'd have to actually physically code it wrong to make a Commodore 64 <laughs> have bad lines, three yeah. sprites only. You'd have, to, you'd, have, you'd have to work hard to make it do that. Um, but we have seen games that have done that, so it's not mm-hmm. the realms of possibility. Um, but it's, for me... It's my go-to version, so I liked. I was surprised by the CPC version. I have to say, it surprised me in color. But the C64 version for me was the the version I played and have a have a real affectionate soft spot for. And I think it's the only version out of those, all of those that I've got played all the way to completion multiple times with friends and and on my own as well. So I really like the C64 version. I, but the Amstrad music, I have to say, is a bit better. That's probably the only thing I really liked about it. But that's me. What about uh, you guys? Go, Brennan. You go. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so this is this is definitely my version. Also, it's it's steeped in nostalgia, like playing it back in the day, uh, especially the two player mode. I know I never really got to try out the two player mode in any of these other versions, but um, but because I played the C sixty four one with my brother back and friends who used to come over, so we we used to put this on all the time. And what was cool about the two player version is that you know you could either help Bruce Lee or you could go against him so what you what usually ended up happening was uh my friend or my brother would help help me and keep the ninja at bay you know on some of the levels but then after a while you would 
he would end up like throwing a punch and hit you by mistake, you know, mm-hmm. um, and then and then everything will go all to hell, and then it'll be like <laughs> you versus him versus the ninja. So it's like it w- it was just like so much fun that that two player mode. Uh, the music, the music, uh, I kind of like it. I know it's not it's not C sixty four's best. It's um, it's just that you know it's got that tune that it got stuck in my head and uh you know it's a terrible tune of course but it just gets stuck in your head and you just uh, you gotta love it the cpc one though is admittedly better definitely it just sounds better and uh as far as uh controls and that go this one plays nice uh, it's fast it's it's accurate um yeah the climbing the, the climbing reminded me of a uh, metal gear solid 3 when you climbing up that one ladder <laughs> for like 20 minutes and it's got the music going. Yeah, it's kind of like that. But it's, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I love the sound cues in this one the most. Um, anytime yeah, you do same. anything that is relevant, it gives you just that little cue. And you just know that you've done something. And they they all got their own little, like, you know, little sounds. So you, after a while, you, you know exactly what you've done. So I always, like, appreciate that. And... Um, as far as graphics go, I think, you know, it's almost a carbon copy of the Atari. There's almost no difference, a uh, slight color difference, but uh, yeah, it works well. Um, this was the second game I ever bought, like a physical version of a game. Like the first one I ever bought was Way of the Exploding Fist, and then this was my second game. So I still got the original cassette, like no, in the cool. box, still, still now to this day. So this is like, you know, it's a very nostalgic game for me. It just brings back so many good memories, especially playing with friends. And uh, you're crying. Yeah, this is, you're crying. I I am crying. The tears. There's, there's tears going down my face. <laughs> <laughs> Best version ever. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> no argument from me. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, oh, mine's quick. Because, yeah, he's pretty much covered everything. Um, smooth controls. Uh, average of sound, obviously. G- gameplay is spot on for me. Um, I-, I like the hit detection. It's fair. <clears throat> I just love how, you know, you can get like the ninja or, you know, George Costanza going up the ladder and you can fly kick him off. <laughs> and I-, I just, it just feels more fluid. It just feels right to me. Again, yeah, besides mm. the Amstrad music, I think this is the, the best version for me personally. <clears throat> I really like, I really enjoy it. I think, it, again, I think it's got to do with nostalgia as well. I'll, I'll wait. I'm not going to deny that. But it's it's funny. I thought, I remember back in the day when I played this, I used to kind of think, I don't know, it sounds stupid. I don't know, maybe because I was a kid, but I used to think it was more of a, I thought it was like a homebrew game. Because I thought, who would make a Bruce Lee game like this? It just didn't feel, it's, to me at the time, it didn't feel like a commercial game. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm. I don't know. I... Kind of. They would they would use the formula repeatedly. Yeah. Data soft. So this, mm. I, don't, I think this is the first one. Then because we, we've played through what have we played through like Goonies and everything. Yeah. Goonies, um, Zorro, Conan, Zorro, yeah. Goonies, Zorro, Conan. Yeah. Conan, yeah, Zorro. They're, sim- they're similar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I love Zorro. I think that's a better game, but um, I think it's a lot harder. But um, yeah, but so because again, I. I Unlike Brendan, I got mine from Dodgy Dave. It was amongst, you know, <laughs> my discs, you know, like we used to copy discs. This, this, this was more um, prevalent in Australia than tapes. The tapes weren't as common. They were around, but it was more disc-based. So everyone had like five games on each disc and you see Bruce Lee, what the hell? You know, you could load that up. and But, um, yeah, no. Oh, go, go just go, going back to actual review. Oh, look, I mean, oh, it's it's fun for me. I, I love it. So, I, I, just, I just thought I'd, I thought I'd mention that bit about it not being an official game. It was just something I used to just go through my head as a kid. Mm. It's very, very strange when I think back now. But it's a strange license. All said yeah. and done, even for nineteen eighty three, it is nineteen eighty four. Sorry, it's strange. Just random Bruce Lee yeah. games don't generally pop up i don't think really they pop up again either is there another bruce lee licensed game because I, I know yeah uh, is, yeah, you know, yeah but that's more jackie Chan, i think then i don't know if bruce lee ever really got another look in did he yeah 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 and the yeah, mega drive yeah there's yeah the bruce lee story or something based off the yeah 
document or not documentary it's true story movie it's based off that i i wonder i, oh, I wow. wonder whether this was um because obviously when did he die was it about 72 73 yeah so it was early 70s when it was well, mid, mid 70s mm. it was in the 70s wasn't it, when yeah. he died so I, yeah. i'm wondering whether this w- was because I, I i remember back in like the early 80s with the advent you know of when people started renting videos and everything like that that bruce lee films had a bit of a resurgence um yeah. you, you know yeah, early fist, 80s, fist yeah. of fury enter, enter the dragon mm-hmm. uh, game of death all those kind of films and so i wonder whether i don't know whether obviously this is an american game i wonder whether that sort of similar thing happened in the states and so this resurgence around interest in bruce lee would have led to what seems like now wow, it's a weird time to do it but back then this resurgence in probably interest around his films probably led to you know this license because it does seem weird yeah. and out of place i think I, but I think in you're context on the money. of i think you're on the going money. on then I yeah can, i, I think I so spot on there you go. Yeah, uh, I agree. I think I think that's a fair assessment. Well done. You're yeah, welcome, detective. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. Because when you said that, I was like, oh, you know what? You're pretty much on the money there. That's pretty. Yeah, that's true. Bruce Lee would be proud of you. That's that's the key <laughs> insight. You've been, <laughs> you've been you've been you've been looking at the finger, and not the moon. Oh, looking at the moon, and not the finger. All the, not missing all that heavenly glory. <laughs> It's just those things you remember, isn't it? Because Nunchuk, Nunchuk's got banned over here, didn't they? There was a big furore in, in the UK. I, I don't know if you know well, that. When, when the video yeah, first came out, when the video first came out, they weren't banned off that of the original because it was unrated. The original video release, and then yeah, yeah, the censors t- kicked in, and then all of a sudden, they for some reason, that's the only sequence. All the other violent sequences of someone smashing a bottle into someone's face, and all the other crazy stuff that happens in the Bruce Lee film. But that sequence, for some reason, really upset the censors. But I think it's because people copycat things like that, don't they? Well, that nunchuck yeah. scene yeah, where yeah. he's just getting all those. Yeah. Really? That cut yeah, yeah that's, out. Completely, that's completely cut. That's, yeah. that's, that's one of the best scenes in movie history. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> did you ever play the? Yeah. Uh, did you ever play the Xbox version? No. No. Oh, oh the original God. Xbox. Yeah, they had a Bruce Lee they game. Have, it was yeah, it was did, a launch game. Yeah, I actually bought it because of completely for the nostalgic value of the C sixty four. I mean, it's not a it's not a port or anything, but it's just a I Bruce agree. Lee game. But I, uh, <laughs> oh man, it, that thing is horrendous. Thirty two percent of Metacritic. Thirty two percent. It got a Metacritic. Thirty two. Wow. <laughs> oh, I was so disappointed <laughs> with that. <laughs> Damn. Oh yeah, Quest of the Dragon. It's called. Okay, yeah, I don't remember yeah. this. I can see yeah. why. You definitely don't want to remember it. That's for sure. Ah, there we go. Yeah. I can see the PAL cover. Yes, it does look familiar. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I'll make sure I won't play that. Thanks for that, Renan. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, you gonna get Apple, dude? Seeing that you did that Apple version. Uh yeah, sure. So uh, Apple. Yeah, this one, uh, oh, if, if <laughs> you guys were talk, talking about the music, uh, like bad on the other versions, then you yeah. missed out the worst one. Uh, the Apple music is absolutely horrendous. Uh, just pull it up on, like, I'm, I'm sure there's a YouTube video you can murder yourself later by watching. Uh, it is horrible. <laughs> it's, it's like, I don't even know what's going on there. Um Graphically, uh, it's very similar to the Atari 8 bits, except the color scheme with the Apple. Of course, it's weird. It's um, it's got you know, it's got that usual pink, like everything's pink. I, I don't know what's going on with the Apple, but anyway, it it looks weird, like just strange. Uh, surprisingly, though, it's it runs pretty fast. Um, the pace of it, it it feels pretty decent. Um, I was surprised. Uh, it's, the sound effects are absolutely awful. Uh, they got that, you know, that hard kind of crunchy Apple. It almost sounds like digitized sound, but it's just been distorted or to hell. Like every time you do anything, it's just like, yeah, it's just like, it's hot. Oh man, it's terrible. Um, uh, it does have the two player option, which is cool. But, uh, Overall, it's it's not a, it's not a bad version if you t- if you just turn off the sound, <laughs> you turn you turn off the sound completely. You're in for like you know it's a decent version of it. It's not like the best one. I would say it's like kind of middle ground. 
and uh, very similar to like maybe the Atari one, um, but just sound wise, it's just absolutely terrible. But uh, yeah, it's it's okay. It looks nice though, considering. Yeah, yeah, the colors are a bit weird, but yeah, it looks uh, yeah. Well, funny enough, um, with the Apple II, from, as far as I know, it mm. actually outputs in a weird frequency. It's it's not really color. Uh, okay. The the monitor does the color the coloring. Mm. So okay, yeah, it's it's some weird way Apple does things. I don't know why, but that's what that's that's why if you play on a real Apple, you can. It looks shadowy. It's strange. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, I never had an Apple, like, had, had any experience with that computer. So it's always just been through, like, you know, emulation, emulation or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And they all have that kind of that kind of uh, pink, kind of weird look to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. So no one else did yeah. the Apple, yeah? No, 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 no I didn't look at no, that. No, no, sorry. No, cool. All right. Uh, I'll go DOS next. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, this was... This was pain. Sweet, sweet lord. Yeah. Uh, look, my review is so short. It's ridiculous. It's a horrible mess. It's it's the C64 and Atari versions in two colors. Um, nothing redeeming about it whatsoever. I just maybe maybe could partly be DOSBox's fault. Um, but geez, it played like a dog. It was. It was absolutely. It was. It was. It wasn't even a game to me. It was absolute crap. I, I didn't give it much time. I just couldn't. You know, I got it all working and so on. But it's. I think it, it's. It was. It was a slog to play. It was not enjoyable. It was ugly. Um, I was just thinking while I was playing. It's just like it's amazing how the C sixty four had like less power but could do so much better. Well, even the Spectrum at the time, and <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. Rubbish, absolute trash. Don't even bother. No one bother play this. Don't don't waste your time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is the, uh, the this is the dog egg version, isn't it? Wow, as we say, yeah. um, this is awful. Um, I tried it on the the link you gave us. Yeah, and uh, it, you had to slow it slow it down to such an extent because when it started, yeah. it was just a. I thought I don't know what I thought something was trying to. Um, summon a demon mm-hmm. uh, through the noise that was being emitted um, and I thought I thought my p- computer would become possessed mm-hmm. and I thought something was g- about to just cr- crawl out the screen through the horrible blue and black lines that were g- greeting my eyes um, so then I said I'll oh, slow it down I slowed it down then tried to play it and then I thought I'll tell you what I'll give it a go on DOSBox so I got a very bit played it on DOSBox and it was just equally as bad it's just awful awful yeah. this, I don't understand this version it seems to come from a, a dimension that shouldn't exist yeah. So uh, let's. I think that's a, you know awful version, awful. Well, I, I can see there online that the CGA version does have more color. So, but I think it'd still play like absolute crap. I don't think the graphics were going to save it. Because I'm more, no. I'm more about the playability than the graphics, if anything. Well, and you, you need to be yeah. able to see it, yeah. to play it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I could barely make out what was going on on it, and that was you know that always uh, puts a, a dampener on the game for me. If I can't actually see the thing properly. Yep. So. Gents? Yeah. Yep. Uh, absolute trash. Uh, I have <laughs> have nothing to say about this version. Uh, I did try different um, different uh, video setups. Uh, the RGB version looks way better than what the CGA, I think I played, or the first one. Mm. Um, th- there is a massive mm. difference in the look, but um, still, uh, gameplay is just terrible i had to slow the thing down to i don't even know what the real pace of it is supposed to be i just slowed it down so it kind of matched the c64 because i got no other reference yeah, point fair enough. but uh yeah it's uh, uh unresponsive it's just ah, oh, it's just awful like the sound is just abysmal again <laughs> It's it's probably one of the worst versions like you could possibly play. I don't even know how this even got released. I don't even know how you could have actually put this on a disc and actually sold it in a shop, like and been like, yeah, this is this is Bruce Lee. It's pretty good. Like, it's just such a piece yeah, of trash. It's rubbish. Yeah. 
that's all I got on that. Yeah. yeah. I just, what can you add? This was just horrid, wasn't it? It was like <laughs> From it was an it's interdimensional cable version of this. Was, <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I didn't quite know what I was looking at. It's just this this it, initially when it loaded, it was just this blurry mass of crazy. It was like watching somebody play at hypertronic speed, like the <laughs> a version in a in a colorless world. I'm like, what? What are you? Where have you come from? Why are you here? Um, and slowing it down just made it just it was like you know it just made it worse. <laughs> um, because it just then you realise that it was crap, just in just slower. Yeah, um, it yeah. didn't make any difference. It's like somebody had the game described to them, um, and then they just sort of okay, I'll have a go. I'll go have, a, have you got any programming experience? They go no. Well, see how yeah. you get on. <laughs> and then they, they made that, and it's like it's like a version that was made by someone that didn't have a clue how to make games in the slightest. Yeah, yeah. And just yeah, so, so we just really. made like a. It's like it's like watching a demo mode in seven million times the speed that you could actually. <laughs> Uh, perceive it at um so i i had to turn it off because i i found it just it's just this you know disturbing bl- disturbing blurring mass that was making my eyes go funny and i'm like I, i'm not sure what you are be gone Go, be gone <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it just reminded gone. me <laughs> many many years ago when um i just left i just finished university and i moved into a house with my friend back then and all we had were was uh two sofas and two tvs there were, there were some beds upstairs but that was it that was our furniture so we had the two TVs sat on boxes because we didn't have anything else. But uh-huh. we'd have he got a PlayStation, so we'd have a PlayStation hooked up onto one of them. Um, so this was about ninety-seven, and then on the other on the other TV, obviously the next door neighbour had an early, an early version of cable or something because if we put our TV, the, this other TV, right up against the wall and it had an inbuilt aerial and plugged the aerial, pushed against the wall, we could get a fuzzy version of whatever they were watching through their cable. And they were always watching Jerry Springer. Um, so it's just Jerry Springer that, was co- that used to, it looked like this. So this, imagine Jerry Springer that looked like this. It, it gave me flashback memories to like not having any furniture um, and, and, live, and, live, and, living in a, and living in a room where I just had boxes for tables. <laughs> that, was, that was what this game did to me. So uh, I, I didn't like this version. Yeah. So it just of that. doesn't remind you of. Doesn't ever. What it didn't remind you of was a fun little platform game involving Bruce Lee. It's, if there was ever a thing that was the opposite of that in every possible conceivable way, it's that. Yeah. As soon as it Bruce arrived, wrong. it didn't make you think of Bruce Lee. It, yeah, it's just it was. It was all kinds of. It was like it was like them really weird versions of movies that came out when Bruce Lee had died. So it's like the Bruce Lee <laughs> oh, yeah. version. <laughs> Or oh, the Dragon yeah. Lee version, you know. So this was end of yeah. the game of death two. You know, it's like so, it's, that's not Bruce Lee in there. Yeah. I mean, who is that? I mean, imagine so, if Rick played this, he'd be pulling out that power cord every freaking five minutes. He had the power at the end of the day, remember? He's like, yeah. you know what? I I command you. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, that's awful. I think I think Rick's going to make an appearance on this show more often. I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't. He I used to work in a video shop for okay. many years with him. He's, yeah. he's a cool guy, but we had honestly we had such a, a bizarre take of people, especially around the time when PlayStation games were rental were mm-hmm. rented out. Mm-hmm. Get people coming in with all sorts of crazy requests. We had one guy came in who just, and <laughs> I would say his name because I can remember it's this day, but it came in and it was. Um, he was playing a what? Well, it's the it's a PlayStation game. It's not a Bruce Lee game. But it's a PlayStation game. Where he, it was Time Crisis, and it had just recently mm-hmm. come out. So uh, I think you could shoot at the screen, and it yeah, was yeah. kind of a hardware it's sort a of game. But he G-Con. played this game because he said, um, he, it went to this lengthy description of how he liked to shoot all the people directly in their brains. Oh wow! <laughs> He's like, going to say <laughs> wow. to him, you got Time Crisis? So, yeah, because I like I like to shoot them directly in the brains, right in the brains. And like, because that's the only way you can be sure. And like, I think you maybe play that game too much. We'll, uh, we'll just put that one around the back. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to rent something a bit gentler because he used to go crazy over yeah. games as well. He used to come in and rent them day after day after day after day. So but yeah, he, take, he, he was take, Rick, um, and Rick used to deal with him particularly well. You should have rented him Barbie's um, pony ride or something like that. To calm him down a little bit. Well, he he came in he furious one time because. <laughs> From, t- from he came fur- in the shop furious, like kicking things over in the shop and throwing oh. things at us because of because of the game Tomb Raider on the PS One. 
it just it sent him over the edge. He was like, he's like, he came in and it, bear in mind, he had Bruce Lee wristbands on. So nobody messed with him. He was about four foot high, strange looking guy. We wore like orange visor to the line. Oh, what the but hell? It's a really strange guy. But he came in kicking all the videos and wiping them off the shelves and throwing things around all because he couldn't, he couldn't do whatever was required of him in this Tomb Raider game. And he was like, never let me have that game again. <laughs> you ain't coming wow. in the shop again, mate. Off. Bye. Wow. Get out. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> There's a bear chasing me. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's a strange guy. Oh, geez. Between that and the old lady that used to wet herself is self-defense is uh, when she stole crisps, but it's a whole different story. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah, what I know. What life as a video video shop. <laughs> I know part, of Gr- part of Grimsby, that blockbuster was in. I can imagine this very well. It's a oh, life in a life serving in Blockbuster, and you work in a video shop, and they rent games and things. Honestly, it's you see a side of society that you you never thought you'd see. <laughs> people will be people in at least in Grimsby would, at that time would have stolen anything, including blank video with empty cassettes, and you name it. If it wasn't nailed nailed down to the floor, they stole it. And we had a particular person that liked to steal Pringles, like by the tube load. What the hell? So, <laughs> Oh yeah, but she, oh, yeah. You used to put them up their sleeves, and it was obvious that they'd stolen them because they they came in normal and they were walking out like like Pringle robots because their yeah. their sleeves of theirs are their straight arms pull them and up? straight legs and just like shuffle out yeah. like a C three PO at the shop. Like yeah. it's not hard to catch you because you okay. you know you've got Pringles hindering your progress out this shop. Loads <laughs> of Pringles. I, I, no one should eat that many Pringles. Uh, well, they couldn't they couldn't stop. You know what's that, what's that saying? Once you pop, you can't stop. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they needed them. Yeah. All right, lucky last. Wow, what a tangent that was. That was great. That was awesome. <laughs> that was fantastic. That's what we do. No, nah, that's, that's, yeah, that's fine, that's man. what we do. Uh, okay, BBC Micro. Now, this is, a, this is a computer I'm not familiar with whatsoever because it's obviously from the UK. Um, I don't know if they came here well, under we, a we, different we, name. No, they were handed out to every every household in the country. Got one. They were just handed out to us uh, with the uh, in bread but in bread bins, oh, bread baskets. Oh, everything. You <laughs> wish. They, they, they were just part, part of the society here. Yeah, you, you couldn't you couldn't move for them. Your people just throwing away. Oh, BBC. Oh, the, <laughs> the, the, what the, what were they? they? Were they Absolutely. Oh, they were all in the, your schools. Yeah, yeah there was, yeah, a, there was yes, a campaign yeah. where every school, every junior in middle school or high school not even high school I'm not sure what the equivalent is but either way they're sort of between the ages of say six to 12 that age range of schooling mm-hmm. all of the schools in the whole country were issued bbc microcomputers. the staff and the schools didn't have a clue how to use them maybe one mm-hmm. person in the whole school if you were lucky yeah but um so we had one in the school that's not i didn't actually play many games on it because the school didn't really do that. They just mm. had one game, I think. <laughs> one, <laughs> one computer for the whole school. What would what, 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 yeah. you have on their granny's garden or something? Yeah, something yeah. something really naff and, you know, adventure, you know, a text-based adventure. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay, so, yeah, so we'll be covering the BBC Micro version next. Um, again, this, like I said, <laughs> this is not a computer that I was familiar with, but, um, you know... I, I'll, I'll I'll get you. You're not going to forget that version. Sorry, <laughs> you want you're us not going to forget that version. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'll go I'll first. Happily. I'll go first. I'll go first. Okay. Um, I turn this. I turn this sucker on, and I'm like, oh, this is ugly. Very, very, very ugly. <laughs> it's it's at night time. Okay. This is uh Bruce Lee has a very bad suntan. Um, <laughs> it's burnt. <laughs> And uh, and there's only one enemy. It's as far as I could see. Uh, you had um, what's his name? Is he? I always forget. Yamo, isn't it? Yamo. Yamo. Yeah. Any Yamos in there? He looks quite strange too. Um, <laughs> and the the real estate, <laughs> the stage real estate is a lot smaller. Like like the MSX, as I can I can tell. But you're gonna laugh at me. I th- I really enjoyed this. I thought it played what? fine. <laughs> I thought it played all right. If, for its for um. The computer's, I guess, limitations. I think they did a fair job for its limitations. I'll give it that. It's not the best version. I'm not going to say it is. I I did review it on its own merit, and I think it was actually pretty good. I liked it. How's that that silence? (laughs) (laughs) Silence is like... The sound of crickets in the room. Yeah, 
yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Oh, uh, good. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I liked it. You know what? Shoot me. I don't care. I actually enjoyed this version. I liked it. Okay. 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 Now come well, at I me. can tell you I didn't like it. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. This thing is terrible. Uh, that black background is just weird. Uh, Bruce Lee's got blonde hair. I don't know where that comes from. It's just <laughs> bizarre. <laughs> Um, the ninja's gone. Wait, what happened to him? I guess. I he's, guess. You know I guess he's probably there, Brendan. They, Sorry, he's they there. They couldn't have him because of the black, black background. Yeah, I get yeah. it. I he's only get it now. He's hiding. He's hiding. <laughs> he was yeah, there. I <laughs> uh, uh, the uh, the sprite flickering. Oh god, I can't handle sprite flickering. It's so annoying. Uh, this one had so much of that, and uh, uh, sound. Um, they had that. Weird little uh, little musical jingle every time for things. Super weird. Doesn't really work at all. Uh, it's also got that zoomed in look, like like you mentioned. It just makes the stages look, uh, you know, just really small. And uh, there's nothing like it. Doesn't feel like there's much to do. It's just uh, it's it's far too zoomed in. And uh, yeah, this this is almost the worst version for me. Um, yeah, no. I got no no experience with the BBC Micro either. Uh, it's you know it's not a computer I had, or we even got. And uh, but if this is <laughs> if this is the example of uh, games, then thank God I didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This wasn't um, great, was it? It was uh, uh, I, like okay. Uh, the positives. Like, so it's faster than the other versions. That's because it's it's rendering barely nothing um but so you know that's fair enough but there's only one character and and as you mentioned uh, same thing he, the ninja could have well been there um but you know because that black background you, you don't know sort of thing which is weird because um just as an aside you you talked about ninja didn't you in your first episode um yeah uh, correct yeah. And, and we just yeah we, we just we, we just came well we just did we just came across ninja because it pops up in zap um mm. and so that game is is very odd because uh, as I, um, I think i mentioned i'm not sure if we've actually put this episode out yet but um it, the, it's daylight in that game um which renders the ninja powerless um <laughs> yeah. which is a <laughs> because you can they just they just can't work there him, he is you know, no, <laughs> <laughs> yes it's the, you know you can't hide in the sunlight it's just impossible um but there you go but this one you know i thought well maybe he's there you know just hiding away but anyway um and yeah like you said brendan it's odd to see bruce lee with blonde hair um and you know it's just just weird it, it's just a very strange version this is the bruce Lee version definitely um <laughs> the layouts were definitely more simplistic it's weird the green the green guy what is he he's just a punk with a nappy on yeah pretty um, much yeah. <laughs> he's got a moeken yeah. And he's got he's got he's yeah. wearing a nappy, and you, you, so it's basically this is like a, a, like a nightmare where you're just chased by a, a green punk who painted himself punk. Shrek. Yeah, you're Shrek or the Hulk or, or somebody yeah. thinks that you know the Hulk or yeah Shrek or the Hulk, and they're just chasing you around as you collect lanterns. This is nightmare fuel as far as I was concerned. This <laughs> this version, um, it was just awful and horrific, and uh, uh, you know it, I pulled the power cord on the whole the whole house. Oh wow. Um, <laughs> I played this one. It was all out. I had that power. It went gone. So uh, <laughs> this was dreadful. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's not great, is it? I was, I was, I wasn't sold on it as soon as I just saw Bruce Lee had a, p- a yellow uh, afro <laughs> uh, and wore a purple jacket. I'm like, is this some kind of seventies remake I'm unaware of? Because <laughs> something's going on with the colours here. And why is the, Why is that ninja or whatever that is? Why is that green thing got a blue mohawk? And how does that relate to anything to do with what? I remember of Bruce Lee in the game because it's, it's all gone weird. Um, but that said, this game, as much as it didn't have a lot in it, and it is the bizarrest graphically in, in every way that it can be, it was weirdly playable. It see? Was. see, I knew it wasn't going crazy. It was, it was, it was weirdly Crater. playable. <laughs> I just, I just, I found myself just able to run about and do you know, Bruce Lee things. I think. I, I think this was the last one I played, so I was kind Same. of, you know, I was I was in the zone of playing the games. I knew where to go and how to play it, and so I think that affected my ability to 
be clear about my thoughts on this. I, I, I wasn't um, get, grabbing a crucifix and shouting, you know, shouting anything at the screen at this point. But I just accepted. I thought, do you know what? For some reason, whoever decided to make this version of Bruce Lee decided Bruce Lee should have always had a blonde afro. Uh-huh. And, then, and for some reason, he, he never wore enough purple. And ninja uh-huh. should be green or sumo should be green. And that's, yeah. you know, that's the choice they made about the characterization. At least they tried to change and break the mold a little bit. So they didn't just copy the other versions. They made, they made their own, made it their own, which is nice. Yeah. Albeit that the rest of it's kind of weird after that, but it's fast. It was, it was really fast. I know that it didn't do a lot drawing wise, but it was, it had a pace and a real frantic pace that perhaps the, only the spectrum version had that when you were running about left and right and mm. jumping, it was fast. Some of the other versions sort of lagged a little here and there. It could have been the emulator. I don't know, but like I said, weird it may be, but it was fundamentally at its heart a playable Bruce Lee variant. And as much as it was weird to look at and it feels treacherous to say it, and I know AD is still got, going to turn the power of him at the whole town. <laughs> <laughs> no, no more from you. <laughs> but yeah, um, it was, uh, it was all right. It was all right. I, just, I think I hated the DOS version so much that it was light relief compared to that. Cause I just yeah, had my brain yeah, rewritten that by too. that one. Yeah. That too. Oh. So yeah, Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee, BBC, yeah. strange computer, the BBC, really weird setup. It's got a teletext mode on the BBC, which oh. is a really strange thing to have on any computer. So it's like a, a text mode for displaying really naff text graphics and information. <laughs> I'm not mm. sure what purpose it serves to have that, but it has. Strange computer. Weird. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that, it's very that, strange. That system, to, uh, the, the teletext, wasn't really big here in Australia in, in our, on our TVs. No one used it. Oh, oh, it was huge broadcast in the UK. daily. Oh, yeah, yeah. part of the main state of broadcast. Hours of it? Nah, not here. Oh, yeah, no. Oh, no. We had it. If there were hours a day, it would, would say, yeah, on TV it would be. And now some pages of teletext, oh, and then wow. for six hours it would be that on TV broadcast yeah. TV. You're kidding? Pages and see, see <laughs> no. Yeah, no, no, no. Wow. no that's, what we had, that's what we had to entertain us. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys still have wonder, TV like, licenses? Do you guys still have to have like a TV license? I thought that was a lie yeah. when someone told me that. Oh, I still have to have that. Yeah. You no, don't have to have yeah. one really now, but no, we've just <sighs> cancelled that. Right, but you can't watch it. You can't watch any live TV. You can't watch. You can't even watch live stuff through Amazon Prime. What? So yeah. if you like, if Amazon Prime have the football on or something like that, or the tennis or anything like that, you're not allowed to watch it if you don't have a TV license. You can't watch yeah. iPlay. You can't watch reruns. Everything. So, yeah. What? The... Strange. That makes yeah. no sense. Weird. Yeah. And, it's, and this it's is free weird. to air TV that you're receiving. Yeah. And you have to have a license yeah. to watch free to air. Yeah. You have to have a, t- it's a yeah. television license. They even, I mean, nowadays, I don't think they have it as much, but they had people that would drive around in detector vans. I've seen and that. And check to see, and check if you had, if you, if you were watching TV, but didn't have a license, they'd knock on your door and say, if you're watching TV at a license, well, here's a thousand pound fine for the doing that. All you really had to say to them was, no, we're not. They didn't have any rights of entry. Yeah. You could just say, no, I'm not. Goodbye. What? <laughs> yeah. Despite wow. the dead handheld detectors, you know, like Ghostbusters uh. walking around. <laughs> your... If that's your job, your life is empty. Move on. If your job is to walk around checking if people are watching television. No, wow. don't, do that. Don't, do that. don't be that guy. <laughs> it's not quite as snappy if you say, who are you going to call the TV license inspector <laughs> yeah. man, is it? <laughs> so don't don't really work. Be... <laughs> There's YouTube videos of people having stand-up rows with them where they've come to the door and said, you know, we know you're watching television and they're saying, don't think we are. Um, and there's YouTube videos, <laughs> endless videos of people having stand-up rows with the TV detector guy or person, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> That's madness. That That's is weird. madness. <laughs> uh, okay. It's about 15 pounds a month as well. I don't know what that equates to in, That's about th- in, in different currencies. but That's that's close to $30 a month here in Australia. There's no chance. Yeah. yeah. Nah, I'll stick with Netflix then for fifteen dollars a month. Yeah, I don't even watch free to air anymore anyway. So yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. that's crazy. Um, but you know what I realised? What we forgot to mention this this um episode: the Master System port. There's there was actually oh. a homebrew version made what? of it a few years ago. Did you guys know oh, that? Wow. No, 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 no. Wow, how did I, that slipped by my mind? Like, cause it was not it, like again, it was homebrew. And um, 
even though it wasn't that reviewed on this, it's probably the best version you're going to play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot to it mention it. Well, yeah. yeah. It looks really nice. It's gorgeous. That it's looks good. A, it's gorgeous. Yeah. It's a free free ROM, obviously. So, um, yeah. Did you guys, did you guys, any of you guys play the, any of the C64 sequels? The, you no. know, they're unofficial, obviously, but oh, they're actually really, 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 really great. One, is there more um, than one sequel? There's yeah, there's Bruce oh. Lee two, which is really good. Yeah, it's, I it's, that. it's 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 pretty hard, but um, it's it sticks to the formula really well. It's got nice little like additions. But Bruce Lee Return of Fury, I think it came out about a probably about just over a year oh, ago, maybe that. a year and a half. That is a fantastic Bruce Lee game on the C sixty four. So if you really love you know the original, you should check those out. Um, Return of Fury. Re- yeah, the Return of Fury. Oh, yeah. It's awesome, dude. Yeah, <laughs> You'll absolutely out. love it. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'll tell you one, th- one of the things that just we didn't mention, um, just in the way that the game plays. I don't know if you noticed this, but you know when you've got those little sections where you've got like the two little lights moving across, and if you hit them, you die in the little spikes, mm. and you have to jump mm-hmm. over them. Yeah. In, yeah. in most versions, you can fly and kick over them. I found in the C64 version, you couldn't do that. You'd get killed. You didn't jump high enough, mm. which was a weird mm. a weird thing. Because it looks cooler if you fly and kick over them, you know, not <laughs> don't do the kick. Yeah. So, you know, if you want to play it coolly, the, the C- again, and I know I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going against the grain again, and I'm being a traitor and everything, but it was another thing that I had a, when playing the C64 and what I found in the other versions you could do, and yeah, there you go. Mm. Um, well, there you go. That's riskier, though, in terms of martial arts yeah, but, skill you know, if you're gonna Bruce, if you're gonna flank it over everything yeah but well, that's you how just fly kick over the street you just <laughs> flying kick his way around just go into a <laughs> super packet flying kick my... around <laughs> it did in my world <laughs> i'm bruce lee i'm flying kick it's, 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 it's just the way i roll or fly everyone stood at least or, three or, or four move. meters back from him in case he just decided <laughs> to just fly and kick anyone or go in a different direction the guy goes whoa stay back from <laughs> bruce is gonna kick you <laughs> yeah, I assume. Well, you know. Did did any of you guys play the PC eighty eight version? No, no. Oh, uh, did you? Oh, uh, uh, then you dodged a bullet. That's <laughs> it's even worse than the DOS version. <laughs> oh no! Oh, my god. Did you play it? Oh play- my god! It's oh, absolutely Lord. horrendous. I, I I have a PC uh, eighty eight. Oh, okay. You know. Uh, emulated setup on my retro pass so that's why it was easy to play because obviously oh otherwise God, i would never have oh that man the image of bruce lee is hilarious <laughs> it's title screen so up. bad it's so bad <laughs> the color scheme is like horrendous in that one you can hardly see what's going on <laughs> the further you get down like into the caves <laughs> the worse it gets it's like oh, you can't even like a... the char- the character just like disappears in the background <laughs> Oh, it's such it's oh, it's it's worse than the DOS <laughs> one. If you thought DOS was nightmare fuel, this is like you know times twenty. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> oh dear! That Sega version, that homebrew version, that's good. I mean, that's got Dude, nice graphics in there. It's gorgeous. The it's P- really good. PC eight eight version. Out. Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. It's, 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 the background on this game i don't know about you but it, what weird ornaments they have in that castle i mean isn't there one of like a giant rhinoceros that just have sort of perched up on top of something it's like what what kind of who decorated this place <laughs> oh the, the big massive sort of buffalo statue thing yeah <laughs> yeah. Bizarre. yeah yeah just yeah. A, you know shoe decorations you know if you're gonna just put a, a hippopotamus on a pot call this and leave <laughs> yeah. that in your garden yeah that's <laughs> you mean you, you mean you don't <laughs> well do you know i've been hanging a lot of lanterns around and i have been linking them directly to the way the doors open throughout the house causing chaos i'm telling you <laughs> you can't go in our kitchen without finding at least three of the lanterns <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez! all right let's 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 move along um so what's your best and worst port Graham, you go first. So for millions of nostalgic reasons and because I like the way it plays and always have, my favourite port is the C64. 
my least favourite version was the DOS version out of the ones we've played by some way. Um, they are chalk and cheese, and for all the reasons we've discussed for the C64, because it's the coolest version, and it plays the best, and I have the best memories of it. DOS one, I'm not sure what that is, <laughs> or where it's from, but it can go back there and stay there for yeah. the rest of the time. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's me. Brendan? Yeah, C64 version all the way. Obviously, um, nostalgic reasons, but not just because of that. It actually really does... It plays extremely well. Um, like I mentioned, you know earlier, uh, I played it mostly in two-player mode with friends, so that it's it's quite a different experience. But uh, it just works so well. Uh, the worst one um, is the one that you guys didn't play. Is the PC eighty eight? It's even worse than the DOS version. I would say the DOS is the worst, but no PC eighty eight all the way. It's uh, absolute. <laughs> It's just, I don't even know what they were thinking. It's like programmed by like a three-year-old or something. But uh, yeah, C64 for the, for, the, for the top spot again. Adrian? Um, oh, I'm going to have to say it, Anna. I thought the Spectrum version was the best one. Wow. What? What? No, <laughs> I, it's the one I enjoyed playing the most. It was no. it, felt the, it felt the snappiest. I, I mean, I get I get the nostalgia stuff. I do <clears throat> trust. I mean, I've played this. That's I've fair. only I've never played the Spectrum version or anything else. I'd only ever played the C sixty four version. So it was. I came back to it and I was like, oh yeah, yeah, it's a C sixty four. So I tried it, and then when I played the other versions, some were better, some were worse. But for me, the, the two, the, it was the two. You know, the Amstrad or the Spectrum versions were the ta- the ones that. Um, I actually enjoyed playing the most on this revisit um, on a, you know, just on a purely put everything else aside, put all the nostalgia and everything else aside, just try and look at these as I do it. And that Spectrum version, as weird as it looks, as strange as it looks, I mean, it's, it's not as weird as the BBC version, (laughs) which is also weirdly okay playing one, but it's odd there, but that Spectrum version just feels tighter, faster. And I just found it more responsive and just, I just enjoyed my time with it. Um, I know. I'm really sorry. Sorry. No, don't be I'll, sorry. I'll, I'll, hand the, I'll hand the badge in. <laughs> but there you go. That, that's why I thought the worst, the worst one. Yeah, I'm, I, I disagree with everyone else. That DOS version is just a you know, it's just a thing of horror. Um, there you go. Yep, me. Uh, yeah, I'm going the C- Team C64. I just, um, I just think it ticks all the boxes for me personally. Um, worst DOS. That was. That's just. Uh, <laughs> that's disgraceful. <laughs> absolutely disgraceful so there you go we're done that was a long one guys that was an hour and yeah. 40 minutes wow you we've just, we've just, we've just it's a record wow, that's great it's great i like i like talking so that was fantastic um before we go guys you just want to give a shout out uh, anything before we go uh know? yeah graham do you want to tell you where people can find us you do all that yeah. at the end of the podcast you yes put it down pat, so yeah. um absolutely so we are available on zap to the past.com where you can find uh all of our show notes and our downloads of all 37 episodes is 38 is out on monday we release a new episode every monday um which is available from all the usual podcast places podbean apple spotify if you search for us on Google, you'll find it. And um, we're also on Twitter at at Zaptuther, um, where you can um, chat to us and do the things that you can do on Twitter, which is fine, and leave questions. You can also email us at zaptothepast at gmail dot com, and um, reach us through the website as well. And there's a there's a sort of a, a box you can type in stuff in there as well. So if you want to reach out and find us, we are out there, and Swift Google us and do that. Um, so yeah, um, we love to hear from all of our listeners as well. Great fun to uh, engage with all of the different people that are in the, in the retro and the gaming communities. Very welcoming place that it is. And oftentimes we get things wrong and they're very quick to step in and help us and get find the right answers. So big shout out to all the people that have listened to us so far. We really appreciate that. Likewise, appearing on with you guys on this amazing podcast as well. Really great to do that. So really appreciate all of that. But yeah, we're out there. Yeah. Welcome. And if you, uh, you can find us on YouTube as well, because we've got the, we sort of, 
do put them up a couple of weeks later they hit youtube as well so if you like to see the pictures of the things especially the crap verts that we include um as so you can see is really sort of see the sort of nonsense that we're sort of digging up um so you can find that here yeah, to search for zapped to the past anywhere basically and you'll get us and there you go yeah yes cool cool uh, I, have to, oh. I have to admit i really love the title of your podcast i think it's quite clever it's, you know, uh, that's all they do it was I was, I was, it's one of those things that you tell people like uh, it the whole thing arrived in my brain in one moment and everything was there i just i was just walking along with, with my partner we were out one walking one day and i thought we i just said just said to us oh, i should start a podcast about looking at c64 games from a zap called zap to the past <laughs> and that was it Dang. <laughs> it just hurt. it was like it was literally like that one moment and she went oh yeah okay that's a strange thing to say in the middle of a conversation <laughs> Like, oh, from. but it was just it, it literally was and i think it never changed it never yeah. diverged nothing i just pitched it to graham and he was like that's good yeah let's do it and that was that so it's, yeah. it was it there was no thought yeah. beyond it just it was just there i don't know it's one of those things i think did, did, your, did your partner reply with oh that's that's nice dear <laughs> yeah, pretty pretty much yeah she just she sort of looked at me and was like uh, yeah okay that's, um that's i was nice. asking you what you wanted for dinner tonight yeah. but you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> so have you guys done podcasts prior to this no 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 just, it's the first one wow well you, you have really good chemistry so so you obviously mm. knew each other before so he's a 30 friend. how long have we know 35 years now 35 years oh, that's yeah. Nuts. yeah about 35 years we've known each other so we sort of go back to yeah. we met at school oh that's cool um, yeah so yeah, so, yeah so, so we've always just, and dragons just, yeah we was that's how we met so we've, we've always just like you know what was that dungeons and dragons and, yeah i ran a well i was part of a dungeons and dragons club at school okay. and i did a poster and he came up to me and he went did you do that poster and i was like graham's much bigger than me i was like oh yeah <laughs> and i was like <laughs> and he's like oh it's cool yeah it's good and then he invited me around the following night to do a tech scroll text in a in a demo he was making yeah because i was a nice. like, 64 demo coder <laughs> well uh, partly i had a friend who was way better than better than me he was more or less an employee just to come around around the house and yeah <laughs> just come around to the house to code he's just he used, to, he, used to, he used to come around and code on my c64 when i wasn't even there Oh, just my mum and dad would just just well, let him in i'd come back <laughs> from being out you know and just come back and he'd be in there in my bedroom coding and I'm like, that's okay how, how did you get in here <laughs> yeah. don't, mind like, me. don't let me in they said it was okay i'm like this is all kinds of weird but that is very cool scroll what you've done right yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very cool demo effect yeah <laughs> that's funny and it went from there all right mm. cool that, that's it's cool guys now it, it's good to see oh. that a friendship can can create something like this, you know. So, no, good, mm. good job, good job. Um, okay, a shout out for us. Thanks to everyone that listens in and supports us on all the platforms. Um, it's uh, YouTube. The YouTube videos, Brendan, have been doing really well. I can see. It's nice. Yeah, that, they've been doing pretty good. You know, there's some really nice feedback there, so that's great. That's really awesome. Thanks for for that. Um. Obviously, a big thank you to um, Gary for um, doing our um, our little avatars, our little pictures, as usual. To Jerome Tell for letting us use his music. So, thanks so much. But um, that's pretty much it. Thanks, everyone, that listens in. And, again, you guys, thanks for joining us. It was a pleasure. Thanks for accepting. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. That's and, all right. Um, it was our pleasure, too. And, um, Absolutely. You guys are more than welcome to join us anytime you like. So, yeah. I think I think it worked out really well. I think there's a good chemistry here. So, yeah, yeah, just give us a shout. Cool, we'll do. No, that sounds really awesome. cool. Love it. All right, everyone, uh, take care, stay safe, and until next time, au revoir. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.